This is Rich Boltz, Associate Director with the Illinois Association of School Administrator, and I'm with uh, Johnny Billingsley, and we are at L Lamont School District in the middle school, and um, I'd like to ask Johnny some questions about his teacher evaluation process. So Johnny, you want to introduce yourself to the viewers? Yes, I'm Johnny Billingsley. I am the principal at Old Quarry Middle School in Lamont. Uh, this is my first year as the principal here, but my sixth year as a principal and uh, 12th year as an administrator. Good. So in learning about this evaluation process taught by IASA for teacher evaluation, what part have you found of this training that has been most beneficial? Uh, focusing on the domain three and, and specifically uh, looking at student engagement I think has been the most in beneficial aspect and how I can use domain 3b and, and look at that and get student engagement and see how that correlates to the teachers performing well and with the other components in the other domain as well okay one of the things that I've been most impressed with uh, really the entire Lamont 113a school district is that all of your administrators are doing multiple observations pretty much like a minimum of eight observations. So how do you get that done? Because a lot of administrators say, oh, I just don't have time to do eight uh, observations. Uh, I try to schedule out at least having a template where I have a way to keep track of all the individual teachers and how many uh, times I've been in the room. So I can see that I'm there at the beginning of the year, just a little bit after that. Uh, so I just tried to spread them out equally. Uh, what else uh, we do is just to make sure that we get out on a certain day and time so we can spread it out to different times and periods. Uh, those are the two ways that I've used the most, um, and, and it's worked out pretty well for us. <clears throat> so when you uh, have management things to do, which all principals do, how do you work in these instructional duties? If it's not a crisis, then it has to be put on, you know, put to the side. Uh, it might be a task that I have to complete, uh, but the only thing that would keep me from going into the classroom is if there was a crisis that I had to deal with it. Um, it, it wouldn't be if, if a parent came in and they just wanted to see me, or if it was a teacher who wanted to see me and I had scheduled myself to be in a classroom, that would take precedence. Uh, over those two unless it was an emergency with a parent that I needed to address right away or a faculty member and I think that's what I use as my guide. So most of your, out of the eight, most of these are informal shorter kind of observations so what do you concentrate on when you do these informal observations? Uh, I concentrate on uh, looking at you know 3B and, and looking at the different engagement that the students are doing. Uh, I've used a little bit of the questioning as well uh, and the questioning doesn't always, when you come into a classroom, it doesn't always lend itself towards fi figuring out whether the teacher is asking a lot of questions because they might not be. Uh, so the student engagement part, I've, I've tried to use this year more than anything after having you at the beginning of the year. Um, and it, it's worked out well. Okay, we did some specific work where we were even looking at domain two, uh, especially the critical attributes. So how do you feel about specifically when you go to look at uh, like say uh, 2A. Uh, do you ever do that kind of informal observation? This year I haven't in Domain 2. Uh, I would like to to expand and use that uh, in the future um, and, and really I would like to take all of them and look at different times during the year so I make sure that I'm getting a more wide range look at the student or the teachers during their informals. Uh, I think after we had recently met and done some walkthroughs together that was one of the big takeaways that I had is that I can spread out the various different components and look for different aspects and give teachers more <coughs> feedback in various different aspects of their teaching job and responsibilities. So how do you communicate to teachers uh, specifically after the informal observations? I always leave them with a reflective question. Uh, I tried to word the question in a way where it's not going to have the teacher be defensive, but it's more of getting them to reflect on why they made certain decisions uh, in their teaching methods, whether it to be small group or whole group, uh, or what do they take into consideration when they're developing a task. Uh, so I try to make it so they think about their process and what they do to plan and how what they do to execute that. And uh, I will email that to them. 
So does that result in some kind of action plan for the teachers uh, when you're using your focused uh, questions to them? No, that would be one of the, the biggest uh, aspects that from, the, from yourself and the IASA that I need to in, in cor incorporate for next school year. Uh, I leave them with a question. They'll respond either electronically or we talk in person. Uh, I would say this year it was probably 75% responding through email and talking back and 25% in person. And that's another takeaway that I would like to improve is, is getting it to where I'm doing more in person talks with the teacher so it will result in some action. So what do the teachers think about the number of observations and the feedback they're getting from administrators? Uh, they were actually clamoring for that. They wanted the number of observations to increase to get a better look of what their classroom is like on a daily basis. So I, I was happy to hear that the teachers really wanted this uh, increased amount of observations and formal observations. And uh, from the feedback aspect, I think we're still a little cloudy about what the expectations are. So we need to make that more clear to them about having conversations to improve. And it's better if we do this in person rather than through, you know, electronic, unless there is just no possible way to get together. So the highlight of this IASA training for you has been what? I think the highlight is the fact that I can come up with a more comprehensive evaluation program where the teachers and the administrators are working together. That when we have these tools, uh, if we utilize them in the right way, it will bring about growth and that we can have specific conversations about components and through those components we can set up plans to improve and uh, I haven't done that through informal observations I would typically do that through formal observations or I would typically ask for a growth goal that they would have before we even started doing observations which it makes more sense to me after we gather some evidence and some some information that we can use that as a springboard to set goals what area do you think your teachers are um, least proficient on with the Danielson frameworks just overall? It would be questioning. Um, they ask various questions, but I think we need to just more training and help with asking higher level questions, mid-range questions, and, and factual recall questions. Uh, we, if we don't plan, and, and it was myself as a teacher, if I didn't plan those higher level questions into my, into my lesson, then I would forget and I would not ask them. So I think that you know we can do a better job with that. Our teachers have improved on that this year. Um, the, and the students actually reported that through the five essentials is that they're asking tougher questions this year. Uh, so just continuing with that process. So would you recommend this IASA training to other uh, building level administrators? I would absolutely recommend it. It's been eye-opening not, on, not only for myself, but for the teachers. Many of them have come up and said that they're glad that both groups have had the training because it's opened their eyes that this is how evaluations really can be. You know, evaluations can be more of a collaborative process, not a, you know administrative side and a teaching side. It could be all of us together working to make teaching better. Yeah, we didn't really talk about that part of it, that the teachers receive training as well in the Danielson methodology. Yes, and I, I think that for allowing them to be able to view videos, provide feedback uh, from an administrative standpoint, what we do on a daily basis, it opened their eyes uh, of the, the critical components and what we're looking for and why you know certain ratings might go a certain way. And I think that's really, it's advantageous to have them to be able to do that. And I, I consider that as an important part of the job and I'll probably do more of that with videos at faculty meetings where we uh, you know view different teachers and their practices and talk about what were the the best instructional practices that you saw what are some learning opportunities for that teacher that they could suggest because then we're talking more about our jobs and our profession and learning and growing well thank you so much Jenny for sharing this with us You're welcome